Hi, it's a money question. Would you say the poorer you are, the more difficult it is to extricate yourself out of that to prosperity based on the history of poverty? Yes, but only because your attention to what is often becomes your dominant vibration. So actually the opposite of that could be true if you understood these laws, because the poorer you are, the greater the vortex of prosperity that you've created because you've been asking in a stronger way and in a more often way. Okay. Most people are offering most of their vibration based upon what they are observing. Right. And I've heard you say money is one of the more difficult ones about telling a new story about it's pervasive. It's in your experience, sort of like your body. It goes everywhere you go nearly. Yeah. You say it's hard and then you move on. So like, yeah. Yeah. are we effed if we're in that situation? Cause it's hard. well, the good news is, and it is good news that in the struggle, there is a creation of something more. And this is a statement that you can count on. This is a statement that we're about to make that is really worth holding in your consciousness because this would free anyone from what you've just described. If your desire is strong enough, it doesn't matter what you believe. You come here with a variety of beliefs and a lot of the beliefs that you hold are not serving you. Well, some of them are, but we've got you outnumbered as we just described. So what we bring to the room is knowledge of who you really are, which makes it more likely after you hung around here for a little while and listen a little bit for you to begin feeling the resonance with who you really are. So if you've got a strong belief, even though you have doubt, or even though you're having an experience, Esther had an experience of Jerry taken off. He told her when they first came together, a strong possibility I might cut out on you early because he was two decades older than she was. And she said, I don't care. Turned out she did care, <laughs> but it took a while for her to not be absorbed in the discomfort. And so you can do it. Here's another statement that goes along with what you said. A disease perpetuates so much more rapidly after diagnosis because attention to it disallows the well being that would be there otherwise, or that the stabilizing influence that was there that much faster. Everything is about the direction of your thoughts. So, what are you getting at? You've got something that you're driving at here. Yeah. I'm in a situation now where money's tight. It hasn't been that way. I kind of was given five-year-old twin girls and I decided early in my life that I didn't want to take on that financial obligation because I, I didn't trust myself. So it's coming up a lot right now, seven, eight, nine times a day, just needing basic survival things like tires for my car. My kids want to go to the trampoline jumpy place and I have to say, I can't afford it. Here's the thing whether you're in an uncomfortable position like you're describing or something that's less that there are a lot of situations where people want something different than what they've got but this is something that we really want you to hear it is awareness of what is and your belief that this is reality and therefore your belief that since it is reality it deserves a lot of your attention if not your undivided attention that prevents you from moving toward what you've actually already created. And so since this is such a pervasive scenario, so many people feel this way. We began describing it to you in these ways. You create your own reality. You know that blah, 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 blah. Step one, two, three, four, five. Step one is ask blah, blah, blah. Step two is source answers, blah, blah, blah. We even wrote a book about it. Step three is you get into the receiving mode. Step four is you get really good at that. Step five is you're so good at it that even when you step back into step one, which is a valuable and necessary thing, you're not mad at yourself. So we explained it in that way. Then we are aware that still these are just words to so many people because what is in their life is still controlling what they are offering vibrationally. So then we began saying, you really want to tell a new story. You want to tell the story the way you want it to be, not the way that it is. But even with that, 
most people are just offering lip service they're saying what they want while they're feeling what they don't have in fact they're saying what they want because they're trying to overcome what they don't have well anytime you're trying to overcome what you don't have you've just activated the vibration of where you are so the now reality keeps dominating so then we say to you your now reality what you call this manifestation or this now is old news it's like gum you've chewed all the flavor out of it's old news it's already done then we started to get some of your attention it's really not the present tense what is the present tense is this vibrational reality well that was sort of hard for you to accept so we began really talking about this vortex this vortex of creation this vibrational reality we gave it the name vortex we wrote two books about this vortex want you to understand that this is real hard for you to accept that something that you can't see and hear and smell and taste and touch is real but it is we know that it is but words don't teach so we can talk about your vortex all day long but until you sense that it is there so then we're still looking for a way for you to accept the reality this reality so there's this reality where your inner being is and there's this reality where you are and the reality where you are has to do a little blending with this reality in order to let these and then the words came from Jerry turning thoughts to things how do thoughts turn to things anyway there are no pipelines bringing supplies in from other planets your economy and its evolution has been about your turning thoughts to things and so then we began to explain to you that you've got this vibrational reality oh it's pure positive energy and it contains everything that you want even things that you can't even identify that you want because the components of it are so expansive and the possibility of the exponential combining of them is more than your mind can even comprehend this vortex exists on a vibrational level and it is coded to you through your vibrational association with it you created it it will always be yours it's the other end of your lackful stick it is for you so some of you began coming along a little better about that and then we began saying you got to somehow get in that vortex where that stuff is well you wanted to go you wanted to go into the vortex but it's asking a lot of you we know that it is it's asking you to suspend your awareness of reality that your whole life everybody have been trying to get you to face and we say if your reality sucks don't you want to look somewhere else <laughs> and so the more your reality sucks then maybe the more you're willing to look someplace else and then we hit upon something that became a very fast-moving advantage for so many of you we explain to you that here it all is and vibrationally here it all is and in your poverty or in your lack of abundance here you are and you have got to find some way of allowing your vibration to rise and become equivalent to what's in your vortex in order for you to receive the thoughts that will translate into the abundance that you seek I, I get yeah you um, can't get a good idea from the story that you just told to us no good ideas come to you under those conditions what am I doing in that moment when I say I need tires for my car oh I can't afford it am I really not doing myself a good service when I say that what do I say instead doesn't matter what you say it's how you feel and by the time you're saying it you've already got momentum going that caused you I know, to say but you it you can't help but notice you don't have money to That's buy right. tires for your in car. that red hot minute you can't because law of attraction won't let you see other than what is in that moment that's the momentum that you've got going you've got this range of radio stations that you have access to and they are sucky suckier and suckiest <laughs> that's the range that you've got you can't go beyond that but you could go to bed and you could suspend your momentum and you could get up in the morning and you could briefly not be aware of that so much and you could meditate and you could quiet your mind and you could allow your vibration to rise where your inner being could offer you a suggestion here's the thing that's tripping you up this is so good we are so happy to say this to you this is going to be so valuable to you in the days and weeks that are following so here's what's tripping all of you up your inner being is giving you the answer to everything that you want but you can't hear it outside of your beliefs so even though your inner being knows 
where your fortunes are knows where to guide you you can't hear it because you're vibrationally all wadded up in the what is however are you talking about me specifically yes okay <laughs> however because I do meditate yes. in the morning wait but you didn't know this you didn't know this that you're about to understand that you're about to feel resonance with so when you quiet your mind and you detach and you feel that detachment and you're there for a little while a few minutes maybe and something occurs to you something feels interesting like I think I'll get a slurpee at 7-eleven even something that unspiritual I get those impulse when you follow it and when you consistently follow it before long those impulses are going to turn into something tangible enough that you can realize that you were receiving guidance that was guiding you in the best way that you could receive it toward the ideas that will blossom into the things that you are wanting so in that moment when I notice I can't afford something don't worry about it yes of course that's what we recommend but we would be recommending something impossible that's like saying your train's going 100 miles an hour in the direction you, you don't want to go and all of a sudden just stop the momentum well you're not going to stop the momentum you're not going to stop the momentum of that the only way you can turn that momentum around quickly is to fall off a cliff <laughs> we're not kidding if you were to fall off a cliff that happens really fast we're not making fun of anything but you would in that what you call death experience you would suspend that lackful thought and you would swoop into the fullness of who you are that's a quantum leap most of you don't want to take and so a kinder gentler way to go about it is to just allow yourself to take a nap go to sleep change the subject accept what is satisfaction with what is just do your best to say well here it is and things are working out for me and I can't see how they're working out for me but I want to believe that they're working out for me and maybe they are working out for me and I do like the idea that there are two ends of the stick and that all of this uncomfortable experience that I've had has accomplished something maybe maybe there is a vibrational reality it could be that Abraham really knows something about that and maybe I can find my way to that and what's my path of least resistance to the state of vibrational beingness that would allow me to be the receiver you have to find a way to allow yourself to be the receiver and there's lots of things that you think you wanted inheritance would be nice but my family didn't set me up for that and the lottery would be nice but I know the odds too much and so I'm blocking that and this could happen and this could happen but 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 there are so many other ways through which it can come we are appreciating this conversation so much because you're hitting upon something that so many people feel you cannot face a reality that doesn't please you and be in that moment allowing the one that does and so this is what we really want you to hear because you heard something from us earlier you heard us say and we felt you feel the resonance with us when you heard it and that was your inner being never looks back your inner being never looks back did you hear it and did you sort of kind of understand it and believe it your inner being never looks back now hear this we have not said this before it's your doing that has accomplished this statement and it matters a lot and we're all really appreciative that you've prodded us into this statement that is beneficial to the entire universe as you hear it and take it home with you and know it what you call now reality is looking back because the manifestation has already taken place that's like cooking the last egg in the kitchen and not doing it well <laughs> and there's just not that much you can do about it because you don't have another egg <laughs> that was so profound yeah. How do you reconcile the teaching of Buddhism that says desire is the cause of all suffering with you talk about desire it's the truth it's the truth what's the truth the desire is the cause of all suffering yes all right well <laughs> listen to this didn't we just say to you that when you know what you don't want you know what you do want and didn't we just say to you that any suffering is because you have evolved to a new place and you're not letting yourself go 
if there were no desire then there would be no other end of that if there were not a desire that you were pinching yourself off from you wouldn't feel pain but that doesn't mean don't create desire that means don't push against the desire that you've created that's just more of a statement about both ends of the stick Esther has said to us in some suffering that she has done either over something like Jerry taking off or her own anger about something that's suffering too in other words when you're accustomed to feeling good a little bit of anger goes a long way and she knows because she's heard it from us and she's lived it she owns this she knows that her discomfort is always because she's out of vibrational whack with what Abraham knows to be and there have been occasions where Esther has said to us Abraham come over here and join me in my lackful thought so that I don't feel the discord between you and me and that's the same conversation if someone called you on the telephone and said hello you don't know me I'm just calling to tell you that I will never call you again you would say alrighty then <laughs> you would feel no suffering but if someone dear and important to you were to call and say that to you you would suffer because of the desire it is the realness of this law-based understanding every particle of the universe contains that which is wanted and absence of it well, well Did, I think what maybe the Buddhists could be getting at are the we just sorry. told you what the Buddhists were getting at we just told you this family of teachers includes that too Esther receives letters from long practiced Buddhists, long students of Buddhists all the time who say to her, I now understand what they've been trying to teach me in ways I've never understood before. When you get to the basis of things, then you can begin to understand. What about the sorry substitutes? You know, someone who's shooting heroin, it's a sorry substitute, you know, sex addict. What they really want is alignment. Well, they're trying to fill the but void. But isn't that th those kind of desires are what cause suffering? The misguided desires that don't get you what you well, really want? Well, looking for love in all the wrong places always feels bad. When you're looking for it where it isn't or using some substitute that isn't it, but it is that always what the feels Buddhists bad. are talking about? Possibly? No, we just told you what the Buddhists okay, are talking all right. about. I'm having a debate with you. It's an understanding that in every particle of the universe that there is wanted and unwanted or what is wanted and lack of it and they exist equally and once knowing what you don't want has caused you to create what you do want then you have a choice to keep looking toward what you don't want which will hold you now in opposition to what you do want and if the creation of what you do want hadn't happened then you could look at what you don't want and not feel nearly so much discord but once you've expanded there you have no choice if you want to feel good other than to go so it is an absolute accurate statement that your desire that you've carved out of this life is the reason that you ever feel pain but it needs to be added when you look in opposition to your desire you can feel nothing other than pain and when you don't look in opposition to your desire you will not feel pain when you look in the direction of your desire you will feel exaltation you will feel power you will feel clarity you will feel whole you say Ooh. yeah Just, just to finish off. Um, say again. Just to finish off, at least say there's somebody who just wants to be famous. That's not me, but, and they just can't be happy unless they're famous or they're rich. I mean, it just seems like there's so much well, suffering and going after something. At well, the basis of your judgmental proclamation about them, <laughs> it's all right because you can't help but notice something and notice it from your vantage point. So it's all right for you to have an opinion about that that your inner being may or may not share in this case doesn't share underneath every stated desire is another desire and beneath that is another 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 and so forth so at the basis of someone wanting fame is the desire to be understood the desire to be recognized the desire to be known the desire to be validated and the reason for that we talked about this yesterday all of you came from non-physical energy where you felt that constant validation that constant respect and acknowledgement of your value and power and then 
a part of you part of that consciousness was born into this body where it's a little dicier out here in the human realm because your parents have already forgotten their connection a lot of people have forgotten their connection and yet humans keep looking to each other for validation they want to get approval from each other what they really want is alignment with source which source is giving them all day every day but humans have come to this place where they have to justify Esther discovered this about herself surprised her really surprised her not that long ago when she was having a conversation with someone she cares so much about and they were on different ends of a subject and Esther wanted so much to explain she was being misunderstood this person had a complete misunderstanding of Esther and her reasoning and her motives and Esther so much wanted this person to understand her so that this person could resonate with her Esther so wanted resonating with this person but it was an impossible thing because this person had momentum coming from another place Esther was not ever going to achieve this resonating between this person and she wanted it she felt desperate for it the conversation went on and on and on off and on and off and on for days and days and days and days and days she never got there and then we began talking about you're looking for it in the wrong places she's craving resonance with her inner being and wanting so much to be understood by others you got to not give a rip about what anybody thinks about you because first of all they're not all that interested in you next of all they haven't paid that much attention and next of all they may or may not be in vibrational alignment with who they are but so many people are seeking that natural desire to be understood and loved which source will give them all day every day but because this connection especially in the beginning is really subtle Esther's relationship with Jerry is really subtle she has to really tune to have a conversation with him now she used to just be able to walk into the room it didn't matter what mood either one of them were in they were together and they were having a conversation now it's subtle because she has to tune you see and so most humans have not learned to tune with that subtlety for the connection that they are craving and so then they lazily or in a flawed premise misunderstanding kind of way they look for it in others and that's why so many people seek that kind of fame it feels like validation to them but haven't you noticed that a lot of them are miserable and a lot of them they don't get what they're wanting and high rate of suicide among them and 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 because even though they're sometimes getting it they're not always getting it it never comes steadily from any place other than your source that's the only place that you can really depend on if you're looking for it from any other person maybe they're tuned in tapped in turned on and maybe that's the state of being they're in when they're holding you as their object attention and maybe because of their alignment they're flooding it all over you and under those conditions you would feel really good but if you're dependent upon their connection and their gaze on you in order for you to feel good you're in deep doo-doo because they're not always going to look at you and they're not always going to be connected when they do you see so the misunderstanding what they're craving is real it's just not where they're looking for it looking for love in all the wrong places we think this is a really good time for a segment of refreshment